What's up everybody, this is John with John Bear Innovations and I'm so excited to give you my latest maths lesson. So today I'll be teaching you about the equation of a straight line. Now before I get into the video, if you enjoy it today, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment on maybe another maths topic you'd like me to tackle, and if you really enjoy the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the videos as they come out. Now the reason why we call this the equation of a straight line is because every straight line in mathematics follows this formula y equals mx plus c. Now, if it's doing anything else on the x, so if it's 1 divided by x, for example, or if it's x to the power of 2, that's going to give you a curved line, or it's going to do something different. For it to be a straight line, the x has to look like to the power of 1. And in math, when it's something to the power of 1, we don't bother putting a 1 there. So it just has to look like a normal x. And you can have a number in front of it. You can have 3x, for example, or negative 2.5x, or negative 5 over 2x, it doesn't matter, as long as the x is in its normal form, so it's a power of 1. Now, when we're looking at our equation of a straight line, we've got y, we've got m, we've got x, and we've got c. These, some of these can be numbers, while some of these have to be in its letter form. So I'll start with the two that have to be in their letter forms, which are y and x. Now, these are called independent and dependent variables, and I'll go through which one is which. And what we mean by a variable is a number that can change. So uh, if you look at your graph, for example, you can see the line goes on forever in both the negative and the positive direction. So your value for x and your value for y is going to constantly change depending on where you're looking at your line. Now, the horizontal line, so the line going across, is your x-axis. And your vertical line, the one going upwards or downwards, depending on which way you're looking at it, is your y-axis. So when we're talking about y components, we're talking about the vertical line. And when we're talking about our x component, we're talking about the horizontal line. Now, x is considered an independent variable. And what that means is, is that regardless of what the equation is doing, it has no effect on the value of x. So if you have, say, y equals 2x, well, x is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, doesn't matter what you're doing to the value of x, x will always just represent itself. So that's why it's independent, nothing is impacting it. Y, however, in that formula, is considered dependent, because it does change depending on what x does. So say y equals 2x, if x is 0, then y is 0. If x equals 1, well, 2 times 1 gives you 2 now. So y would equal 2. If x was 2, it would y would equal 4, and so on and so forth. But you see how y constantly changes depending on whatever x is doing. So that's why it's dependent on our x variable. It's a dependent variable. So the next thing we're going to look at is the m. And m actually represents gradient. And there's a, very, there's a lot of conjecture in mathematics because no one is 100% sure where the M actually originates from. There's a lot of different opinions as to where it starts from. Some French origins, other different theories. So I can't actually explain to you today where the M actually originates from, but I can explain to you what gradient actually means. Gradient is often referred to as slope. And what we mean by that is how it changes, how the rate of the line changes. So if you have a positive m, for example, your line is going to look like it's going upwards. If you have a negative m, so a negative slope, a negative gradient, it's going to look like it's going downwards. So that's so it's looking like it's constantly going down and down and down. So this is what m does to your line. It changes how it, how it looks, if it's looking in the positive direction or the negative direction. Now, m actually represents the rate of change. And what we mean by that is the rate in which the line is constantly changing. So say if we go back to our y equals 2x, for example, m is 2, because that's the, that's the number in front of x. So what it's saying is, is that our values are constantly going up by the number 2. So you would have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, so on and so forth. It's going up by the value of 2. Every time we put one more number into x, so 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, constantly as we're going up, the rate of the line increases by 2. So 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so on and so forth. If we have a negative number, now your line would be going downwards. So let's say, for example, if we had y equals negative 6x. 
So now this line would be going downwards by 6 every time. So you would have 0, negative 6, negative 12, negative 18, negative 24, negative 30. So see how it's constantly going downwards by 6. So this is what our gradient does. Every time we go across 1 along our horizontal line, our x axis, we have to go up or down depending on what our m value is. And we can work out our m value by simply looking at the number before the x. And it doesn't have to be a whole number, it can be a decimal and it can be a fraction. It's just whatever that number is in front of your x. Our last component is our c, which represents constant. And a constant is just a number. So again, it can be a whole number, it can be a fraction, it can be a decimal, whatever, whatever format you're using, it's just a number. But what it actually represents is what's called our y-intercept. And what that means is where our line crosses the vertical line. So if our constant is 6, for example, then we know that our line will cross the vertical line at the 6 point. If our if our constant is zero, what that's saying is, is that it will cross the, the, the vertical line sorry, at zero. If it's negative three, it will cross the vertical line at negative three. It just lets you know where your line crosses that vertical line. So say, for example, if we look at y equals 2x plus 5, well, we can tell that our gradient is 2 and it's positive. So that means it's going upwards in values of 2. And we can see that it's plus 5 which means that it's crossing our vertical line at 5. So if we keep going across, we know that it will go 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. It'll go up in 2s, but it starts at our 5. And that's what, we, that's what we're referring to, and that's why it's so important when we look at our y-intercept, because that's where it starts along the vertical line. Well, hopefully that explains what y equals mx plus c is our equation of a straight line. Thank you so much for watching today. Stay safe, be kind to one another, and I'll see you next time.